Welcome to Rick's Corner. Today I'm going to talk about building big biceps, the really big biceps like Arnold used to have back in the day. Uh, I've thought about this for many years. I thought about how we trained back then, how I train now. I see some guys who have big arms then, they have small arms now. Some guys retain their size. It's all a matter of genetics, a lot of it is. It's a matter of diet and how you train. Biceps are not a huge muscle, so you can't really train them heavy. Um, Dave Graper told me this years ago. He said, you train your bicep too heavy, it'll turn into a little small peanut. It just kills it. It just it retracts like a turtle's head. I kind of believe that. I mean, back in the day when I was about 17 or 18, I'd curl the 65-pound dumbbells because it was an ego thing. Did it make me any bigger? Not really. It made me stronger. But what really focused on my biceps back then was really being able to isolate the feeling. When you curl the bicep, you want to feel that thing contract and pump. And there's some days you can, and there's some days you can't. My rule of thumb back then was to do three exercises. Now, Doug McNally says, you know, the bicep goes up and down. You only need one exercise to work. Well, maybe you do, but I still feel like maybe you need other exercises to make it really respond. I remember starting with dumbbell curls, just standing dumbbells, just like this. I'd do three sets, maybe eight, nine reps, and I would do alternates. Because alternates, I could really lean into the bicep. And then I would finish off with hanging concentration curls three sets again. Now sometimes I'd be do four and four and four sets, but sometimes I do three, three and three. It just depends on how I felt that day. I've even done five, five and five, but I thought it was too much. Um, that actually worked really well. That's what Arnold used, so a lot of guys used, and they retained good biceps throughout the years. Bill Grant's another guy in the 70s, still has a magnificent bicep. Albert Beckles had the split bicep. That's very unusual, and that's usually pretty much genetic. I ran into a friend of mine the other day, he's a wrestler, and he flexed his arm. I said, where'd you get that peak? He said, I ripped my bicep. I never had it reattached, so it had this little hump in it. Then I was told that switch to barbell, by, uh, barbell curls because they're a basic barbell curl, which is a strong, heavy movement, and it'll add maybe more mass to your bicep. So I did that for a while, and I felt it, but I felt it more on the forearms. It's really a mind thing. You really have to isolate where you want that bicep to feel. I mean, how many times have you done biceps? They don't even pump. How many times have you done them and you can isolate that muscle so you actually, it's your cramp so bad you can't even move it. I wish I knew the answer why those things would happen. I remember going back to Minnesota to wrestle and I came back here after a few months and I went to Gold's Gym one night around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And I did biceps because I hadn't been able to train like I wanted to. I got such a pump, I literally could not bend my arm. That's what we're striving for. Remember when your first days you start working out, you got so pumped you couldn't move? That's what we want. Nowadays, they have all types of uh, uh, nitric oxide and things you do to, to uh, alarginine to make your, your muscles pump. And they do work, beet juice, all that kind of stuff. But we didn't have it back then. We just worked out hard. Now, I would say do a combination of three exercises because I think it's better that way. It breaks the boredom. You could start with barbell curls. You could use the alternate bicep um, dumbbell curls. And then you could do, do the um, one-arm hanging uh, concentrations or do to the preacher bench. Now start with those with a barbell, maybe an easy curl bar. Hang way over the bottom and get a full extraction to the bottom and then curl to the top. That's a really good exercise. And then you can switch that and superset it with dumbbell standing curls. So you're doing the preacher and then you go over and do a, a pump set with the dumbbell standing and then you do seated or over the bench one arm dumbbells. These are all good exercises, but only pick three of them because you don't need more than that. Uh, machines, as far as the cable curls on the machines for the preacher, excellent. There's also a cable hanging from the floor where you can get the bar, uh, little barbell handle and you can just curl with the, with the cables. Those work good for me sometimes. It just depends on the day. And I don't know about you older guys, the older you get, it seems like it's harder to maintain that bicep mass. It just, I knew a guy years ago, he had great biceps. I saw him in the gym, he's in his close to late 70s. And all he had was some wrinkled skin there. I don't know what happened to him. It just went away, unless you just stop training that hard. Um, now there's also a fine line where you can train too hard. If you train that bicep too hard, it's not gonna grow. But you don't wanna train it too easy either. I've gone from the heavy weights of seven reps to the light reps of 20 reps. And the light reps, uh, uh, I don't get much out of it. You know, you get a pump for the day, you know, like for the hour, and then it's gone. Some people swear by that. They think it's the best way to train your bicep. I don't think so. I think you gotta train it medium. Medium weight, not heavy weight, not lightweight, but medium. Like I said before, seven reps are good for me and they really work. So give that a try and make sure you're, you have enough uh, energy as far as protein and carbs because you need that to train, of course. Um, a friend of mine told me a long time ago, and I've heard this throughout the years, that they used to eat gummy bears after workout because the sugar goes right into the glycogen of the muscle. 
Well, it makes sense. You actually need glycogen more than you do protein after your workout. So if you can eat something like that with the protein, do it because it'll push it right back into the muscle. All right, that's for bicep. Now, I'm not going to get into the tricep right now, but also remember that tricep is two thirds of your arm. So a big tricep looks good. You know, if you can get that out, you've got three heads on that tricep. So you want to train it so all three heads work. Now, I snapped mine off about 20 years ago. I never had it reattached. So now my tricep's flat, but I'm not going to compete anymore anyway. It doesn't really matter. But we'll get on triceps at some point. But biceps, you want a good bicep. And make sure you train it properly. If you go overboard, over the pump, you're not going to get anything out of it. Just when you get a good pump, stop. Leave it there. Try it for a few weeks. Make sure you eat right and see how it works. Now. Let's go to Ask Rick questions. People ask me over and over and over, how in the world did you train without having any carbs all week? I don't know, I just did, everybody did. We didn't eat carbs, we had meat, eggs, uh, fish, chicken, cottage cheese, uh, there wasn't much in the way of protein drinks, salads, cheese omelets about 11 o'clock at night at Zookie's Deli. <laughs> and that's how we drank, that's how we ate. We ate that way all the way up to Saturday. Saturday night and Sunday was a junk day. You could have ice cream pie, anything you wanted, pizza, spaghetti, meatballs, any of that stuff. You wouldn't hold it in your body because by Monday it was out of your system again. But you got a good pump on Monday in the gym. By Tuesday you were back down to not holding water and you're back on your diet again. I don't know what it was, but the energy level never ran out. And you guys ask me this all the time. How do you do that without carbs? I wish I had an answer. There is no answer other than the fact we did. And we didn't even think about it. This is just how we ate every meal. And we go to the gym and train. Um, Zabo told me once, he said, you know, every couple of days you can have a little bit of sugar and junk. It's not going to kill you. But, you know, in our mind, we take it and we feel like we're getting fat. So that's a mind over matter thing. And probably true, but every two or three days you could have a little bit of sugar, a little bit of carbs, just pasta or something. And it's not going to make any difference unless you're training for a contest. And, and if you're not training for a contest, then you can eat if you want. It doesn't really matter. You just want to stay lean and hard. So that's the answer to that question. I hope it works for you. And give it a try and let us know what you think. And please send in any questions you might have and I'm very willing to answer them. Now if I have answered these before over and over, then don't send them in because they're all on my, my shows. Every one of the things these guys have asked me is on my show. People just fail to look at it. Okay, Rick's tip of the week. Now, I never steer you wrong. I don't publicize products. I don't endorse products unless I believe in them. And if I don't talk about them, I, I don't like them. But if I talk about them, that means I like them. Old School Labs has come to me and they sent me a whole array of different supplements to take. Anywhere from testosterone replacement to pre-workout to branch chain aminos to greens that come in a powder that if you don't want to eat a lot of vegetables. And I've tried every one of them and I really like them. I mean, I really like them. I think it's really good. The boost, they boost your testosterone levels, the, uh, the burst for energy and building muscle. It's been working for me and you know, I had knee surgery and, and it's even helping repair that. Old School Labs, they have a good website, oldschoollabs.com. I have a, a picture on it as an ambassador and I'm doing this because I'm trying to sell you a product. I believe in it. I mean, I really believe in it. So go on there and click on it, see what you think and see if you like it. There's the description for the link in my description box. You can just click on that, it'll take you right there. Um, but out of all the companies I've seen over the years, these guys are the most honest. They did the research, they made their products real, there's no fillers, and I'm really happy with it. I'm seriously happy with it. But you can try it for yourself and tell me what you think. Okay, be sure and order my book, The Time of My Life. It's about wrestling, bodybuilding, music, all the stuff I did from around 15 years old, or actually earlier, on up till now, and how I accomplished all that I wanted to accomplish in one lifetime by thinking positive and never looking back like I can't do it. It's just like with this knee replacement, I can do it. I said I'm going to drive, I'm going to go to the gym, and I'm driving and going to the gym. I'm using a cane, I can go without a cane now. I went through the barrier of the pain and the infection, and I'm good to go. And it's all from supplements, uh, positive thinking, nutrition, and getting into the gym. Okay, see you guys next time, and have a good day. Bye-bye.
It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.